Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Good day. Welcome to our show today. In this episode, Jill and I talk about HOAs, homeowners associations, and breaking their covenants. What are the repercussions of not cutting your grass off enough? Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Okay. Um, This is Luke. We have Luke again. Luke asks, Jack talks about posting Craigslist land wanted ads and says you can do this in various markets. Doesn't Craigslist Craigslist not allow people to post ads in markets other than their own based on the IP address? Boy, that's uh, not my understanding at all. I was Luke, thinking but the Luke, same you're a bright guy. What they, I'll tell you what they don't let you do is replicate the same ad over and over and over again. You'll Correct. get, you'll get uh, hauled away for that. They'll take them down. You but can't. if you materially change, change the structure of the ad and but keep the sentiment the same, like we want to buy your property, we want to buy your property in Minnesota, we want to buy your property in Maricopa County, Arizona, and, and so forth, that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. There, there are software programs like... Um, and services. There's, if you go on Fiverr, you can do exactly what I said, put, and somebody will break that message down and manage it and post it all over the all over the Craigslist everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's not expensive at all. Also, I was going to say too, isn't there? Are, I know that there are ways to get around the IP address too. You can have your IP address pop up in Toronto if you want to. You can, you know what I mean. That's a, you wow, can listen to you. I know this stuff. You're smart. I am smart. You know, I know how I know smart. part of this. Right, just a couple of minutes ago, I was fixing your mouse, but <laughs> stop. <laughs> but you know where IP addresses no, go? How did uh, your Toronto I know where this IP is. address? You know why? Because there's a British soap opera that I like, <laughs> and it's seriously, and you can't get it unless you're in Britain. But there are services that you could have your IP address pop up that you are in Great Britain, so you can watch your soap opera from LA. Hmm. Who knew I knew that stuff? <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> I'm not well, just this, a pretty face. Does your just elbow kidding. hurt from patting yourself on the back too much? Too much? <laughs> you know, sometimes I don't get a lot of enough credit over here. You know, thanks a lot. What did Rodney Dangerfield say? No respect. That was one of my dad's lines, by the way. My dad walked around saying that all the time. No respect. <laughs> Yesterday, you were landing your airplane in Pinell County, Arizona, and now your IP address is in London. Woo! <laughs> Look at me go. <laughs> So, yeah, Luke, that's the deal. Uh, there's Luke's middle name, by the way, is Workaround. Yeah. It's a massive workaround for um, for doing that. And I would highly recommend it. You know, I mean, in the those of you who are members or if you've uh, downloaded the free ebook that we've that I put together a lot a couple of years ago, the first thing it says is drop everything and uh, make make a posting on Craigslist and see what happens. And tons of people have reported back saying, Man, it we, works. we did a real estate deal doing this. Exactly. You know? Like, oh my gosh, I've people done a called lot, me. A lot of real estate deals that right. way. If not anything, you're gonna you're in the business now as an investor, and you're you're gonna see what the inbound call flow is like. Mm-hmm. It's one of the little tricks that we use. Yep. We don't we don't use it anymore because our mail campaigns are just dramatically they're so successful that we don't need it's any more. The best. We don't need any more deal flow. But. And we can pick it and customize it there. When you're doing an ad like this, hey, call me if you want to sell your land. Yeah. You're going to get a plethora of different things. Yeah. So, cool. If you have a question or you want to be on the show, reach out to either one of us on landinvestors.com. Today's topic, HOAs or LOAs and breaking their covenants. And POAs. <laughs> POA. Property, Property Owners, Owners Association. Association. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's all those. HOA is a Homeowners Association. LOA is a Landowners Association. They're all the mm-hmm. same thing. What, well, what are they, Joe? What is a HOA or what is it? How would you define it? Good question. It's a governing body over an area, and you know when you're buying into it, you're required to be notified, and you're usually handed what's called the CCNRs. Um, when at at uh, time of purchase, you should be notified ahead of time, and then they have a certain window that they have to supply you with these CCNRs. The covenants, 
what is it? Something. Covenants something and, and restrictions. restrictions. Yeah. And basically, it's the rules of the community. Like, you are buying into this community. This is a, a lake community, you know. Everybody has a boat, and you're allowed this much dock time. And, you know, it could be something like that. Or even like a regular homeowners association, even just a little master plan community. That's usually where we see it the most. And a homeowners kind of thing where... Everybody's required to have their trash cans in by six o'clock that night after trash guy comes. You have to m- make sure that your weeds don't get above X amount of inches um, and all those things. It's, and it's meant to enforce and keep a nice community. So no one's going to have a car up on blocks in their driveway for six months for everybody to stare at. If you drive down any drive through any urban town or urban city, it's glaringly obvious which subdivisions are master yes. planned and which ones have ccnrs it's covenants um conditions and restrictions i just looked it up okay thanks and which ones don't right so you know this show is partly about defining that which we sort of just did uh and then talking about breaking those rules and mm-hmm. what can actually really happen so, you know ccnr or ccnr hoas are something you know that everybody has a, a real strong opinion about you're either pro hoa or you're extremely anti-HOA. And some of them are, are insane. Like, mm-hmm. I remember when I when we met, you lived in a place where you could only paint your house oh. like with one of three colors. Exactly. And they actually had the colors and they told yeah. you what they are. And that was it, man. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Your wall could only be a certain height. And if you wanted to put, I remember I lived in one place a while back where if you wanted to build a shed, like or put a shed in or something, and it went above the wall, you had to go to the meetings, you had to submit plans, get it approved. Right. You know, all that stuff. So and, some people hate that, right? Yeah. And some people love it. Some there are some people do not want to have an RV parked next to them at, at all. Mm-hmm. Or they don't, you know, if you ever go in a subdivision somewhere and somebody's got an antenna that's like, 17 stories right of the ham radio scenario and it just looks ugly and awful and that's that's a non-hoa subdivision right exactly i personally i don't hate it you know i don't i what I'm i want to have a, i go i go both ways because some of them are just darn ridiculous when you're telling me that i can't have my garage door open more than six hours during the day okay come on i'm working on something it's kind of weird yeah. but like if you had a cabin you would never want that because you you want to spread out like right. in the wilderness and all of that. Right. And Have it, all your toys out and yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah, but I don't know. In a city, I'm not sure that that's the right place to do that. Right. I'm not sure that my next door neighbor should be running an auto mechanic shop out of his garage. Right. So, you know, there's a place for him. I mean, and you basically, I just, you want to have your eyes open when you go into it. You want to, and sometimes when you, the way we buy property, which is from private parties, we don't, we have to do our own checking. You know, they're right, you not always check. Right. They're not going to necessarily alert us. They should. But I mean, come on, it's a private party. They're not going to tell me that they're selling me a car that, by the way, hasn't had an oil change in six years. Yeah. They're not going to disclose that. So they might not tell me. So I have to make sure I do my own homework. And I know. In our asset type, some of the good things about uh, HOAs or LOAs are road maintenance. So if, if somebody uh, develops a, a subdivision in a rural area, and when there's not a lot of development yet, uh, they put, you know, they, they blade the roads once or twice a year. They pay for that. So mm-hmm. all the dues that you're paying actually go toward some good. Mm-hmm. I've, it's true. not uncommon to see HOAs have in excess millions and millions of dollars of unspent money mm-hmm. because it, for improvements. Yeah. And that, that really, that makes, I have a peeve about that. Yeah. You know, if you're going to pay spend it in, money. If you're going to pay into it, you better spend it to make the community better. Right. Yeah, you know what? Here's a, here's a positive thing that I do like about HOAs because we've owned properties. Remember, we've had some and like there's one in New Mexico that I'm talking about where it's got a beautiful entrance and a beautiful gate and it and it and I think that improves a property and improves a value. We've had some too where they have um they have a little park area that's maintained and that's going to improve the area and, and improve the value. So those are some nice things that they do that um that i see it as a positive so so think of this and i was talking we were talking about this on a weekly call last week if you if you buy a prop a bunch of properties 150 200 properties you could create and incorporate an hoa mm-hmm. and you could make the landowners you know pay you 39 dollars a, a month or a year take that money and really develop it and do it some good mm-hmm. So you can create your own, on the other side, create your own HOA, write your own CCNRs, mm-hmm. 
that use are, the money you know, to pay for your staff if it's needed to do right. this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's not crazy. You can get on the other end of it and really make it work. Right. The main thing that I think, too, that the takeaway here is know what you're getting into and know how serious the restric restrictions are and what they really, really can do. If you do these things like Jack was talking about, you're running an auto mechanic out of your garage and the, the HOA catches wind of that, you could be fined. And by the way, they could put a lien on your property. So if you don't if you don't comply within X time limit because you bought in this property, it's this is not an optional thing, by the way. They don't hand you the CCNR and you say, you know, I'm going to buy this house, but, you know, I don't want to be involved. I'm not going to pay the dues. I don't want to play your games. You guys all do what you want around there, but I'm going to be in my own little bubble here on my property because I bought this land. You know what? You actually don't get that choice. So this is the thing that you need to be aware of. And they can come down on you and they really can take make your life difficult here's how it would play out <laughs> if they find you because your grass is too long mm -hmm. and you don't pay you you uh you you lift up your figurative middle finger to the whole thing <laughs> and you don't pay for years and they send you notice after notice and and fine after fine right. you don't cut the grass you they can um put a lien on your property and eventually foreclose on it on yeah, that lien they really can that's it's what you that's, need to know so it's not Every, no, you know, every again, everybody's got a real clear opinion about this, but it's not something that you can like you have to pay taxes. It's the mm -hmm. same thing or they're going to come and get you. It's true. <laughs> and you don't want that. Exactly. So HOAs are not optional. Exactly. So just know what it is. Mm -hmm. And know and and, uh, w and and also too when you're selling properties, this is another thing too. I do this all the time. This is something you put in your postings. You know, make sure that the per per you don't want your buyer to have any surprises too. Right. So you want to make it real crystal clear. By the way, it's in an HOA. And I, what I would do personally is make it obviously spin it as a positive thing. And if there's whatever attribute, whatever they do that's positive, like, look, that's why it has this pretty gate. They maintain the roads in the wintertime. They plow so they make sure you can get there. Whatever that, whatever they do, that's a positive thing. And make it a positive thing for your buyer. And it'll right. really help. And it could increase the value of your property. Exactly. And here's my final point, And it's a very positive one. Whenever we get uh, an offer, signed offer back on property and we find out that it's in an HOA, the first thing we do is call the HOA and see if they have any properties for sale. Mm -hmm. Good tip. Buying HOA, buying property from an HOA that they foreclosed on because of past dues is very common. And uh, they have their version of a tax, it's their version of a tax sale. Yep. Brilliant. So make sure you do that too. Good tip. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information, that's me. And inspiration, that's me. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You're not alone in your real estate ambition. That was a good show. It that's was. That's really informative. We try tried to make it entertaining, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? I <laughs> think that people, that I think that some people don't realize that even in our property time, just because there's not a house on it, doesn't mean it can't be in an association. Right. And it really can. So you got to check. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We are, we are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill and this was, was the Cash Flow from, from Land, land show. show. We are the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.